is we can see that we've already talked about it, it's all learner centered um, but it doesn't mean that you just hand over everything to the athletes or the participants and just say you get on with it, do whatever you want, here's a, here's a ball, have a game. It has to be coach directed. Okay, um, and so mutually beneficial, so we said that about are the athletes needs being met and then also you can reflect on your coaching to see if your methods are good. Okay, so we can see um, that, that keyword there, ongoing, it goes on throughout your lesson and as you see within my sessions, constantly referring back to the learning objectives. So once again, justifying why we're doing the teaching and also by providing um, assessment at the end as well as the start, immediately athletes can see how much they've improved within a single lesson which not only empowering for them, but it's also such it's a good buzz um, for the coach or teacher as well. So we have a look at these things. So you might think you're a great teacher, but with assessment for learning, we can find out how much learning's taken place within each individual and how we can maybe meet their needs. So just take just pause that, have a little time to look over that. So moving on. So I want you to pause this page and just have a read through these um, statements. I'm not going to just read them out to you because that's boring for me and for you. So have, just pause this and have a read of these. And we're going to move on to the garden analogy. Now think of these as plants. Summative, pretty much you measure, you, you plant, you plant and then you measure the height of it. So it's the outcome of what you've done. On the other hand is how you fed it, watered it, what have you given it to make it grow to that height. So summatives, how high it is. Formatives, pretty much what you did to make it get there. Okay, so we can probably say that this is the most important thing for that plant to thrive. It is the formative assessment. So your basics of the constant Q&A, of the observations, of your assessment as you go to then influence the future learning and teaching of your athletes. So now these are some of the factors inhibiting assessment and tend to link into summative assessment. So tendency for coaches to assess quantity and presentation of work. So don't worry too much about this bit and this bit. So this more would be to assess results or outcomes. Uh, we've only won one out of all of our games this season. That means um, my coaching techniques are wrong. Um, however, when it should be actually looking, have my individuals learned? Now, a good way to do this is to do a baseline assessment at the start. For example, your footballers, first training session, you maybe have a little, inf well, not a trial, but you would just assess about where your players are in regards to different types of skills and then you can do that at the end. And if they've improved, regardless of the results of outcome, that means you are a good coach. Okay? Um, and once again here, we have greater attention to results or stats. And once again, if you're not um, a very successful team, um, not getting good results, then you're going to lead to lower self-esteem, especially if you're putting so much emphasis on results and outcomes when it actually should be seeing that if they're learning, how can they become better athletes. So this actually links to the sort of win-at-all-cost mentality, um, which you'll see there day in, day out, in every single sport, in every walk of life. Now, I'm not saying winning isn't important. However, as coaches, especially with foundation athletes um, and participation athletes, is if they're learning and they're doing it safely, then you're doing a very good job regardless of the result. So that's the most important thing. Okay, so also this links into the athletes then comparing with each other. I've scored um, 10 three-pointers this season. You've only scored one, um, which then is going to demoralize the less successful learners. So you need to make sure you're focusing on that learning and how much they're improving. Okay? Um, now, this is something that we're going to debate in class about this win at all costs mentality. And I want you to think about that with regards to different um, ages, levels, 
and sports. Should we be going for the win, regardless of whether learning's taken place with, within our athletes or participants? Okay, moving on. So, just to talk about how they are linked, they are in interconnected. Now, the way they might do this would be if you improve your ability to create space and exploit it in an invasion game, such as rugby, then if you increase the ability uh, to create space, then it's in rugby, then it is going to lead to an increase in the number of tries. If your participants are getting better at being able to create that and exploit that space. So you can see how they are interlinked in that way. Now the good thing about formative assessment is that it is in informal. Um, summative assessment, if you get a grade or a result, there's nothing you can do to then go back and change that. But with regards to formative, it is ongoing and um, you can constantly improve your athletes being through interactive and timely feedback. And here's what we've pretty much been arguing through the whole of this little lecture, is that formative assessment is the most effective and has the biggest impact on learning and achievement. So if you're using formative assessment correctly and doing it well, then your outcomes or your achievement will follow. Okay, so the implications for coaching is pretty much what we've already been talking about. To share the learning goals with our athletes, involve them, make it learner-centred, provide feedback that um, empowers the athletes and shows them how to um, improve, and also have faith that, you, that every athlete can improve and that you can facilitate that process. So going back to our baseline assessment, our learning objectives was to describe two categories. So I want you to now think about that shaky hand. Are you a high five or are you a shaky hand for that one? Be able to describe two categories. And also to be able to explain the importance. I want you to revisit now and think about, have you actually learned anything over the last 15 minutes? Okay, thank you very much for listening. Um, I look forward to seeing you in class. And have a good one. Bye-bye.